You know, I'm really starting to think that some people just cannot be helped. So I think I made a pretty good video debunking some of the left's favorite arguments against the Electoral College. Now I do acknowledge that if it was the other way around then yes Republicans would be probably bitching about the Electoral College. Although to be fair I have seen many left leaning liberals defend the Electoral College despite the fact that their candidate did not win. One of the arguments that I made was I looked at the state of Oregon to debunk why the popular vote isn't a good idea. The majority of this state is red and all of those red zones happen to be the parts of this state that feed the blue zones because all the blue zones are cities, are big cities, while all the red zones are rural farm areas. But yeah, every year we are elected a democratic governor. Now listen, I get the argument. Well, what's the problem with the majority of the people choosing who they want? Well, you're denying the simple fact that people from cities have a different culture than people from rural areas. People from cities have different needs and different priorities than people from rural areas. Basically, culture and politics goes hand in hand. Listen, I'm not stupid. I was born here. I was born in this city. I was born in the city of Portland, Oregon. I was born in one of the blue zones. I now live in rural Oregon. I'm not stupid. I know exactly what city slickers think of rural, rural America. I know what you guys think of rednecks. This right here is what you think of when you think redneck or when you think rural America. Dumb white trailer trash with missing teeth and guns. To be a lot honest, this is probably an average redneck that you're gonna see. You're gonna see average people probably dressed a little differently than you. Other than that, they're gonna look exactly like regular people. You can think I'm making shit up, but this is what the average redneck in a rural town looks like. Even this so-called hipster look, when you type in hipster on Google, has a closer kinship to actual rednecks in my town than they do what we think of city people. My point is, is that without the Electoral College, you're giving people like this the same power, or more power actually, than people who look like this. You're saying that you trust people here to choose politicians that will end up writing legislation for people that live and work here. And I will never understand the people that think that is a moral position to have because you're looking out for the power of the people, the will of the people. What I really don't understand is the hypocrisy behind that logic. You're the same people who bitch about the upper class white people controlling your lives. Because upper class white people don't understand what it's like to live day to day life like you do. Yet you think it is moral for urban apartment renters to choose who rules over rural land owning farmers? Please tell me you see the fatal flaw in that logic. The hypocrisy. Now I know, someone out there is going to try and flip my logic against me. Well, do you think that farmers should write legislation for city folk? No, I don't. That's my entire point. You know, the honest right-wingers and or libertarians never wanted the government to have that much influence over your day-to-day -day life. The Constitution was written to prevent that. But you guys are so adamant on changing the Constitution, you forget that the document you seek to destroy is the same document that is supposed to protect you from people who don't understand your way of life, your way of living, your culture, or what you have to go through. Or people who don't even understand the way that you personally want to live your own life. And you want to get rid of the Electoral College because you're afraid of what Donald Trump is going to do. While ignoring everything that made Hillary Clinton more of a bigot than Donald Trump ever was. Whatever, that's for another video. For another time. Newsflash. Since you've helped our government push itself away from the Constitution that is supposed to limit the government from ruling over you, you never thought about what could happen if a so-called bigot or evil person had control over the things that you wanted the government to control in the first place, 
like your centralized education, healthcare, taxes, the law, legislation over your life and your body, your transportation, entertainment, and so much more. But you made the assumption that the government is there to protect you. You made the assumption that anyone cares about your life. You wanted all of this power to be in one location at the hands of one body of power. But you never thought about the consequences of what would happen if you gave the government the power that you wanted the government to have in the first place. In my video challenging Trevor Noah's opinions on the Electoral College, I made an accurate analogy of democracy and the popular vote. You have a country called the Ocean Alliance, which consists of a continent and a small island. You have the Eastern Island with a population of 75,000 people. This island obviously has a very different standard of living than a continent would. Then you have the Kingdom of Fuck Islanders who's obviously going to vote in their own interests. And obviously an islander doesn't understand the standard of living of a continent. And then this is where the pipe dream of popular vote and democracy comes in. Basically, under popular vote, you're saying the Kingdom of Fuck Islanders, which is a continent, which doesn't understand what it's like to live on an island, has no fucking idea what islanders go through. With a population of 15 million, you're allowing them, through democracy, through moral justice democracy, and the will of the majority of the people, to choose what happens over in the Eastern Island with a population of 75,000 people. And yes, I made this analogy pretty obnoxious because it's pretty fucking obvious what I'm trying to say. People who live in cities, which is where a majority of the population is at, does not know what it's like to live in a rural area and should have no jurisdiction over anybody who lives in a fucking rural area. So let us go over the power that the federal government actually has, which isn't much. They have the power to lay certain taxes. They have the power to pay the debts of the United States. They have the power to declare war and make rules of warfare or to call for the assistance of a militia. They have the power to regulate commerce with foreign nations and among the states. They have the power to protect the natural rights of citizens. They have the power to establish a currency, to set a national standard of weights and measures. They have the power to provide punishment of counterfeiting. They have the power to establish post offices and post roads. They have the power to protect intellectual property. They have the power to create courts. And they have the power to define and punish piracies and felonies. In other words, the government only has power to provide national defense, interstate highways, foreign trade, defense of natural rights, and punish fake production of currency. In other words, Congress is not authorized to pass any law on any subject just because a majority in Congress thinks the law is a good idea. Instead, the areas in which Congress is authorized to act are strictly limited and defined, enumerated, which are the powers that I just listed. In other words, the United States of America was never supposed to run on the majority of the vote, ever. The United States was founded to protect the individual. So next time you want to abolish the Constitution of the United States or the Electoral College, think about it next time. Did you like that video? Then don't forget to subscribe for more content. Leave a comment about your thoughts or about what you want to see next. Or if you want to call me names for having different political opinions than you, then be my guest. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe.